welcome everyone thank you for joining us today so let's begin our session with a wonderful quote be present in the now let go of unnecessary and live authentically it is a simple mantra for being conscious so for starting a new chapter of learning i pratiksha being your host for today's event want to extend a very warm welcome to all of you present here i hope you all are doing amazing as we know that embracing the transformative power of a simple mantra for conscious living where clarity and purpose intertwine in the symphony of daily chaos find the beauty of simplicity breathing intention into each movement prioritize authenticity cultivating mindfulness as a guiding force let deliberate choices echo in the chambers of your existence reducing life's noise to amplify its essence with gratitude as your compass navigate the intricacies of a purposeful heart cherish mindful connections release the weight of excess and sever the elegance of a consciously curated life in simplicity discover the profound and in consciousness find the richness of your truest self on behalf of whole sims family i welcome you all for today's international webinar on the topic simple <coughs> mantras for conscious living and to add our guest of honor and today's speaker ms padmaja ayya it is a great honor to have you with us ma'am we are grateful for your presence thank you now thank, thank you ma'am now let me introduce today's speaker ms padmaja ayya to you all she has almost two decades of expertise supporting people from all walk of life including mentoring ceos and cxos senior citizens school children children from unprivileged background employees of educational and sports institutions celebrities and other public figures she hold certification in several different healing modalities including theta healing from the think institute usa and rebirthing breathe work international she is a qualified therapist in inner child work and a gold medalist in plr therapy she is also a student's counselor couples counselor life coach and emotional intelligence coach she conducts workshops seminars me- mentoring and leadership program for a variety of audiences these workshops and programs help in managing conflict overcoming anxiety and stress building camaraderie empathy and collaboration improving communication focus and productivity and help an individual live a purposeful and fulfilling life thank you pratiksha thank you lakshmi <clears throat> and thank you dg saksham for this opportunity for me to be able to connect with audiences from all walks of life from uh, different uh, parts of the country and i think uh, beyond our borders it has always been an immense pleasure for me to be able to talk to large audiences because um, i am inspired by the kinds of uh, people i interact with who i am today is a result of the learnings that i have i have had through my own life story and that has only happened because of teachers who have come in various shapes and forms through the journey of my life be it young children be it school students or college students be it um uh elderly people be it the people who come and uh, help me out in my life and uh, through these large connections that i've had over the years so i really look forward to such uh, connections and uh, it is lovely to be able to uh, have interaction uh, have an interactive session i don't generally enjoy you know a one sided lecture or a one sided talk where i'm just giving some gyan and everybody is listening and it's more interesting when people ask questions and they bring their perspective and many a times you know i listen to perspectives i may have never heard before and it really uh, gives me areas for me to learn and for me to explore further so thank you all for joining and um, like you all know today uh, the topic for our conversation is simple mantras for conscious living okay so conscious living many times um, <clears throat> we believe that we are quite aware of what is happening with us we think that we are in control of our lives we think that we know what is happening with us 
but it is far from the truth and this has been written to me through the journey of my own life you know when you are very young you think you know it all once you pass out of your school and college you get a sir degree or a uh, you know you are uh, an expert in some field or something you think oh i know everything and now i'm all geared up to learn about life and that is when uh, you start experiencing different situations in life and where you start asking the question who am i what is happening to me i thought i had all the answers but this looks like a googly i don't even know how to handle this situation in my life and that is how this um, topic has always been very interesting to me because every time i speak about this topic it has always touched people in very deep ways and i've always had people reach back to me telling me that it actually helped them embark on the journey of self discovery so usually before i start any session i have this habit of uh, getting everybody to take a few minutes to think about some intentions you know in our hindu culture i i know many of you will be aware that when we start a puja or we start some uh, prayer or some havan Uh, you know the priest will ask us to take a sankalp sankalp is to set intentions before we start the puja why are we doing this what is the intent behind starting this puja so he will give us some water and he will ask us to repeat certain mantras and certain statements that i am doing this because i want uh you know the welfare of my family i want everybody to be in good health or whatever reason we are doing the puja so i love that culture because as i studied more and more about the brain and how the brain functions i realized that setting intentions is one of the most powerful exercises anyone could uh, do in their lives for them to get what they desire in life so even though you don't know what i'm going to talk to you about even though you don't know the mantras that i'm going to share with you i just want you to close your eyes for a moment and think about three things that you would like for yourself or information in that area that you would like to derive at the end of this talk right and just put it down in your book or think about it it is best to always put things down on paper with pen and paper it is a very powerful activity and i will be telling you about this later on in the session so please think about three things that you would like to get out of the session or achieve out of the session to my next slide and uh, it's story time i love sharing stories and this is one of my favorite stories so this is the story of two drunkards there was a small town and there were two drunkards who used to spend their entire day drinking and they used to sit at the local bar and then they used to drink from morning to night and have fun amongst themselves and you know uh, comment about the people who came and went out of the bar or passers by and they lived in their own world and they kept drinking throughout the day they kept you know a, a tab at the bar and they never paid the person the money and they used to say yeah yeah don't worry we come here every day where are we running off to we will pay you your money is what they used to say one day finally the bartender said, the owner of the bar said that no you cannot get any more drinks here and so you you're not allowed to enter my shop so these two people they decided that you know what this is a horrible town these people don't care about us they don't deserve us so what we'll do is tonight let us go to the shore so this town was on the banks of a river they said let us take a boat and let us sail uh, row across a river to the other village or uh, other town on the other side and let's uh, start living our lives there these people don't deserve us and so they wait the whole day they wait for sundown and then they wait for everybody to go to their homes and for them to retire for the day and then they say okay now let us uh, take a boat that would be tied at the banks of the river and let us go and so they go they find a boat they sit in the boat and they keep rowing and rowing and rowing all night they keep rowing 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 and they are jolly good singing their songs fully high and then finally it is morning and then they reach the shores of the other place and then they are about to get out of the boat and then they look at the people there they are very familiar people it seems like you know the people from the other town have come to this town along with them they're saying what is this these people have followed us here also look at these shameless people they are following us and then the people are looking at them and saying you foolish fellows you have been rowing in the same place all night you at least could have untied your boat from the banks of the river where it was tied okay so this story is so symbolic of how we are leading our lives the story is very much like you know we are stuck in the same place we are trying to live life repeating the same actions and trying to get different results right so first 
untying ourselves or becoming aware of where am i if where i am right now is not working for me if it is causing me suffering what it is that i need to do to move beyond that and to move towards what i truly desire in my life so this is the premise from where i am going to talk today about the mantras for conscious living now what is conscious living conscious living is nothing but living a life of choice a life of conscious manifestation where you know that you have you are living the life that you chose to live not a life that happened by accident not a life where you are living complaining about the world around you or pointing the finger outside of you when you are pointing the finger outside of you at any situation what you have done is you have given the remote control of your life to everybody else around you and you are telling them you press the button i will display the channel for you and then you complain that this whole world is taking you for granted nobody takes you seriously or everybody cheat you or you know uh, we complain about people and the world about life situations we play the victim card throughout our lives and who suffers at the end of it all it is we who suffer so it is very important for us to know just as that boat was tied to the banks of the river what is it that is tying me to areas of my life that i'm not even aware of which is stopping me from progressing in the direction that i would like to be a conscious creator you know one of the uh, mottos of the work that i do is to create clusters of conscious creators what happens is that for example at this point of time we all are uh, hearing about the war situation in palestine and gaza and we sit here and we feel bad for them and we are complaining and we take sides okay these are they are right and they are wrong and they are right and these are the wrong people and we have all these discussions now tell me what is it that you can contribute just by discussing about the situation or feeling bad conscious creation is what bringing yourself to a place where you can actually do something in such situations even though it is so far away from you being right here right now how can i become a conscious creator where i'm making a difference to the world around me where i'm impacting the world in the way that i would like the way to be the world to be right that is what conscious creation is so for that it is first very very important for us to understand where my orientation that is where am i coming from where am i coming from does not mean no which place or which region or which country i come from no i'm wh- what i'm talking about is what i believe to be me today my identity what is the basis of my identity what is it what are the factors that have created this person called me that has made this me uh, with this personality with this outlook about life i need to understand right so talking about the past i would ask you all to reflect on this aspect about are you accessing or are you living your life with focus on a resourceful past past or a regretful past okay i just want you to start making small simple notes as to from now on you all are going to start paying attention to the dialogues that you have the conversations that you have is it related to things that have worked for you or things that have helped you grow or is it about the things that have only pulled you down and all the wrong things that have happened to you and the focus being on everything that went wrong in your life and when you think about your future are you a person who thinks about what you would like to create in your future or you're only thinking about how dreadful the future is or how dark the future is how everything is falling apart there's going to be a world war recession is happening a pandemic happened we don't know what is going to happen what is going to happen to me is am i going to be okay are we living in that state of mind it is very important for us to first become aware of our state of mind where am i operating from what is the software within me which is um operating and what is my dialogue how is it that i engage with the world outside of me this is very very important for us to identify in the first place all right and there are so many exercises that we can do but first let us understand the basics so this beautiful um you know uh, this is a real it's one of the laws of the universe what it says is where your attention goes your energy flows right it is as simple as you have a phone and when the battery is down you are going to plug the charger so when you plug the charger and switch on the switch it is going to get charged so what is happening is electrical energy is flowing through the wire into my phone and it is charging my phone in the same way whatever you think about you bring about 
whatever it is what are the quality what is the thought what are the thoughts in your head that you're perpetually having you're constantly having which is creating your future you know this is such a powerful powerful law this is such a powerful reality of one of the laws of the universe that if you look at your world around you today and once you understand this law you will recognize and you will realize that what is around you today is exactly what you have created whether you have been conscious about it or unconscious about it is the question that you need to ask yourself all right so how to identify now so we constantly have two voices there is this one person who is acting and then there is a voice in my head which is constantly talking to me i want you to identify from now onwards that voice is that a voice of fear or is it a voice of purpose and imagine you are riding a scooter or a motorcycle and imagine you are accelerating and pressing the brake simultaneously what is going to happen you are going to so much salt and you are going to fall you are going to have an accident is it possible for us to drive a vehicle by accelerating and braking at the same time no you have to let go of the brake and accelerate or you have to stop accelerating and step on the brakes isn't it so what i'm trying to bring to your attention here is that when you think about something your brain is very happy it says give me work to do give me work to do tell me what you want me to do and then the moment you think about something constantly the brain thinks okay this person wants more and more information about this subject and it will start collecting all the data that it has gathered now people let me tell you one fact that on any given day on an average day a human being has 60 to 70000 thoughts in their head okay most of these thoughts a large percentage of these thoughts is related to the fears that we have or the past you know our anxiety our guilt the shame that we carry and all the things that we regret this is what we keep going back to in everything that happens unconsciously and a small very small percentage of it is related to what you're actually doing right now most of it is for uh, you know fear or sadness about your past or regrets about your past and anxiety about your future a very small percentage of your thoughts is right here right now in what activity you're doing that is why i have worked in many organizations where people tell me i'm working uh, for 16 to 17 hours and 18 hours a day and still work doesn't get done why because what your attention goes to your energy flows there your attention and energy is all going to areas that are not helping you get work done right now just think about it and the day you understand this and the day you start putting those practices in place where you can keep bringing your focus of attention right now it is like a tube light what does a tube light do a tube light spreads the light all around the room but what does laser do laser can even cut metal so it is important for us to ask ourselves this these thoughts of mind and the way that my mind is interpreting these thoughts are my thoughts uh, is my mind all over the place and how can i bring my mind to a laser sharp focus so that i can be fully here and now so that i get more and more done in my life i feel productive i feel good about myself and let me tell you all one thing that for us to grow in life for us to feel like we have achieved something or we are successful it is so important for us to have a healthy self esteem a sense of self worthiness is very 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 important and how do we build that we cannot build that when our mind is all over the place and you're constantly bombarding yourself with self limiting thoughts all, all right here i want to bring to your attention a very interesting fact that i'm sure that all of you all might have at some point of time um wanted to buy something let us say you wanted to buy a red car all right and you look at the market you go and look at the cars of different different companies you go and test drive a few and everything and finally you narrow down on a red car you do the down payment and you're waiting for the delivery all right and suddenly you might have noticed that wherever you go you are seeing the same car you are seeing the same red color you are seeing the same brand it could be a phone it could be a scooter it could be anything this is something called the reticular activating system of the brain your brain is taking that input and when the brain knows that this person is paying a lot of attention to this activity okay let me bring all of that to his view why the brain just wants to give you what you desire this is an abundant universe this universe wants to give you what you desire it is just for you important for you to know that what am i asking for what am i flowing my attention to am i flowing my attention to all the things 
that I don't want. I don't want to be fat. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to fail. I don't want this. I don't like that person. I don't want, uh, you know, to, um, uh, I don't want that person to have those things. You know, we are bringing jealousy, envy and so many things. The don't wants are so dominant in our head that the universe is only getting inputs for the don't wants and so that is what it brings the universe does not understand want and don't want the universe is only going to pay attention to what thoughts you're putting in your mind all right so when you start focusing on oh i want to buy a red car and then suddenly everything red all different kinds of red cars or that particular brand will start appearing in front of you and then it's like magic you would have noticed this in so many different situations right so I just want to give you all examples of instead of thinking, I don't want to be fat. Can we talk about I want to be fit or I am fit? A better way to say is I am fit. But if you can't, your brain can't accept the I am as a reality right now. You know, your, sometimes the voice in your head may say, whom are you fooling? You know, are you fit? No, you're not fit. How can you say I am fit? Okay, at least start with I want to be fit. And then you can shift it to I am fit. So when you think about I don't want to be fat to when you think about I am fit, just look at the image, close your eyes for a moment. Think about I don't want to be fat and then think about I am I want to be fit. Look at the shift in the image in your mind. Can one of you tell me what is the image that you saw when you thought about I don't want to be fat? I saw myself fit. Did you see yourself fit when you thought about I don't want to be fat? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I could see myself fit. Whereas when I uh talk about you know uh, i want to i want to be fat it was the other way around i was very lazy i couldn't do anything so i think you didn't hear me right i said i don't want to be fat is yes, this yes. so I so want I, to be- yes so so basically i uh talk about two things the first one was i don't want to be fat at that time my energy level was different i yeah. i was very fresh and i was feeling very fit okay and okay. when i was thinking the other way round no it was totally different i couldn't you know do my diary course uh, daily course every day properly i was uh. not in a proper mood because i was fat i was not able to wear my dresses which i wanted to wear i was looking awkward all right Ma- any yeah, yeah. um probably here yeah. like um i just want to um share my um thing like when you said like if i start uh thinking that i i uh, i should not be fat i the the image which comes to me is like um a thin person like okay this is this is the imagination which comes immediately to my mind but when i think when i start think or when i start imagining that i should be fit i i feel that like i i i i, I started imagining myself as a more fitter more person with more energy and with th- th- that that's how i see so there is a difference between like how i saw two different situations yeah okay thank imagine you imagine two different situations yes 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 Fit, uh, i mean like when i start thinking about fitness it it's not just with my appearance it also uh, about the energy level confidence and things like that but like oh. when i start thinking i should not be fat then i the the i i started imagining the exact opposite of what the fat okay. is okay. in terms of physical appearance yeah okay thank you thank you prabhu yes sukshma when uh, when you say think i don't want to be fat i first conjured up an image of myself being very fat and how am i going to wait myself behind but when you said make the image that i want to be fit then immediately a fit sukshma came to mind you know who's wearing all those uh jazz is uh, you know checking suits and jogging or doing something that's good for my health so yeah. that the fat or the triggered something not so good but the fit one definitely uh was more positive thank you thank you sukshma so generally what happens is what sukshma just shared is what generally happens in most of the people i have been asking this statement over the past i think 10 15 years to people and the majority of the people will always say that even though i am saying i don't want to be fat the first image that comes to my mind is of a fat person and when i say i want to be fit or i am fit i see a fit person like sukshma said in a jogging thing or doing some yoga or in a gym or something in the same way when you think about i don't want to be sick versus i want to be healthy i want to be fit you will again see that i don't want to be sick the word sick has a connotation and the 
brain will conjure up a picture of a sick person and most of the time people tell me i saw myself in a hospital bed with all the tubes going into my body and when they say i want to be healthy or i am healthy they look at them so i'm sitting at a table i'm eating fruits and i'm feeling i'm i'm happy and i'm you know it's a bright sunny day they get all these images about them all right i start i want you all to take these statements that what statements you all uh, have repeatedly uh, you all are having in your head i want you all to take it and spend time with it and pay attention to the picture in your head you will understand how your brain is interpreting the information that you are presenting to it thank you for sharing all of you uh, lakshmi prabhu and uh, sukshma thank you so much and all the other people are also welcome to share their inputs on the chat i, I will see it later uh, right now i'm going to uh, progress with my presentation so i just want to give you all as a microbiology class ri uh, right now okay you don't have to take this very seriously there is no exam at the end of this session but i think it is really really very important for us to understand what is happening in your brain so if you look at the left side this picture with all these colorful uh, you know blotches on the brain you will see that we have three parts to our brain main brain we have three three parts one is the reptilian brain the mammalian brain and then the neocortex all right now this reptilian brain is something that is attached to the cerebellum and the brain stem which from where uh, the vagus nerve also gen is uh, starting and it goes through most of the important organs in your body it connects most of the organs so they say that it is possible for a human body to be alive just even with the reptilian brain to be alive is what i'm saying okay now the mammalian brain is something uh, which comprises of a lot of parts out of which some of the important parts of the mammalian brain are the amygdala the hippocampus the hypothalamus and all of that all right this is the fear center this uh, so the reptilian brain is all about survival and then uh, being alive and the reptilian brain is the fear center uh, sorry mammalian brain so what happens is when you're faced with danger the fight flight freeze response is generated from this mammalian brain and then the neocortex is something that developed over the millennia you know it was not there earlier and slowly and steadily developed and this part of your brain which is behind your forehead is the part of your brain which is very very it is called the neocortex because it is a new addition it is a new uh, uh, development in the brain but also it is the uh, the part of the brain which helps you to solve problems which helps you to think and to analyze and all of that so for example let us say that you are walking in a garden and then you see a uh, something like a snake you know it's it's a water pipe but when you look at it it seems like it is a snake and your mammalian brain will say oh my god snake run from here or kill it or something like that that response is uh, generated from the mammalian brain but there is a part in the mammalian brain called the hippocampus which collaborates with the neocortex to assess is it really a snake or is it something else and then in a flash you say oh it's only a pipe and so i'm safe so this collaboration with the neocortex happens only when you slowly and steadily strengthen this bond between the hippocampus and the neocortex why am i giving you this information because it has got a lot to do it has got everything to do with the mantras that i'm going to share with you all a little later okay so imagine if you were to live your life constantly in fear you know what is going to happen if you didn't build your neocortex if you didn't build strength in your neocortex we all go to the gym we do some form of exercise we walk we lift weights and we strengthen the muscles in our body right in the same way it is important for us to strengthen the muscles of our brain the muscle for focus or the muscle of the neocortex the analytical uh, the thinking brain all right so if we don't do that what happens is when the body is stressed when danger is perceived the amygdala decides or the mammalian brain decides that now is not the time for us to take care of the health and the immunity of this body it is not the time for us to have all the other functions going we have to prepare this person to protect themselves from the danger that is imminent in olden days the danger was the wild animals and all the unknown things that are there in today's times all our dangers are mental and emotional 
does that person like me uh, is my boss going to give me a raise am i going to lose my job is my child okay am i going to die is this going to happen is that going to happen we are constantly worried and fearful of the uncertain of the unknown and we are constantly keeping ourselves on high alert when this happens the um, brain is secreting stress hormones and these stress hormones one of the major ones which is cortisol is injected into the blood stream and the blood circulation is taken away from your immune system it is taken away from your digestive system and it is sent to your hands and legs why to flight uh, to fight or flight that is why when you're very angry when you're stressed you're angry your hands will be itching to either beat somebody up or you that day you will go and clean your house really well you will clean the dishes really well you will clean your house really well everything will be stick and span and work will get done really fast because so much energy is flowing into your hands you see but when you are keeping yourself in a constant state of stress and you are not doing anything to strengthen this part which is going to help you reason or to manage conflict to manage that danger you are going to end up eventually uh, developing different kinds of health problems so you will see that in today's times whenever you go to a doctor one of the major questions or the one of the first questions they may ask you is are you under any kind of stress you know what is going on in your life of course there are other factors because of which we develop ill health but stress is one of the major contributors so why this is happening is because we are unaware that we are we have given all the power to our fear center why because it is important for us to know what is going to happen and when we don't know what is going to happen we are constantly under fear right and then it is so it is very important so i i learned this very uh, beautiful uh, way of understanding that let us say this is your mammalian brain and this is your neocortex so when it is like this they are working they are touching each other they are working in collaboration but when you flip your lid is when you lose your cool you get angry you are in fear you are anxious you flip your lid that time your mammalian brain comes into full power and makes all the decisions for you which may not be good in the long run it is important for us to find ways to keep ourselves you know in a state where they are collaborating where we are strengthening we are doing practices to strengthen the neocortex so that the neocortex works collaboratively with the hippocampus to to resolve things in a way where you are not putting yourself through constant stress okay and on the right side you will see the picture of this brain we have the left lobe and the right lobe we all know left is for logical thinking right is for creative thinking and in this part of the right brain is a part called the defocusing network the defocusing network you all would have experienced that you know um, sometimes when you are doing something and suddenly you start your gaze gets stuck on something different and you just keep gazing in the distance and many people will come and say hey what are you looking at but your gaze is stuck you're not able to pull your eyes away is when your brain is going into a defocusing state why because it has so much data at this any given point of time there are millions in uh, bits of information that your brain, brain is processing you're not only listening to my voice you're not only looking at me you're not only looking at my hand movements but you are also taking in all the colors from here you are also aware of what is happening in your background whether the temperature is hot or cold whether there are sounds around you uh, what uh, other thoughts that are happening you are also analyzing what i'm saying so there is so much that is happening in any given moment that the brain has to sometimes put you on hold or it has to freeze you for it to be able to um you know bring uh, uh, to process all that information in uh, the times when we had the monitors and the pcus we had this process called the defragmentation process we would put our lap, uh, uh, systems on defragmentation and leave it for a few hours then you know this computer on its own would uh, process and uh, put all the files it is like proper filing is happening of all the information that is stored that is what happens when you defocus that is why it is so important for us to give our brain moments of rest moments of breaks for us to be able for, for our brain to be able to function even better you know your brain consumes most amount of energy from all the energy that you give your body even when you're sleeping your brain is consuming energy it is so important for us to understand that this brain is playing such an important role and for us to be able and also the capabilities of your brain your human brain are immense 
And for us to be able to tap into even a small percentage of it, it is important for us to understand what am I doing with myself? How am I? What what are the what is going on in my head all the time? How is all that information affecting the quality of my life? This is really important for us to understand. So that is the end of the biology class. Um, but I, I hope that you all were able to take away the importance of building your neocortex or, or focusing on how can I now strengthen this collaboration from with the fear center and the neocortex so as to be able to manage my life in a better way. All right. We will talk about how we can do it. The other factor that is really important. So what happens is when you're able to bring this collaboration uh, uh, active into your brain, you become more resilient in life. What is resilience? Res resilience is nothing but the ability to stand up again when you feel beaten down, to be able to respond to pressures and unforeseen challenges quickly, adaptively and effectively. So I put a picture of a bottle of water and a jar of honey here. So if you take a bottle of water and shake it, let us say you... You, it does not have a lid. The water is going to spill all, all over, right? When you shake it, but you shake a bottle of honey, it will not spill quickly, right? So, how can you become like a bottle of honey? How can you keep yourself in center? What can you do to not be shaken so easily in the face of calamity? Uh, I think somebody's uh, this uh, mic is unmuted. It would be uh, good for you all to mute it. So now talking about the fears, addressing our fears is really, really important. Let us say you have garbage in your house. Will it work if you just sweep all your garbage under the carpet? Is it going to be okay? At some point of time or the other, that garbage is going to accumulate there and it's going to start smelling and, and you're not going to have a good environment in your house, isn't it? So your fears, your fears are nothing but something that is trying to come to your attention to keep you alive. You know, our fears, uh, our uh, reptilian brain, mammalian brain, they are not our enemies. They are there. And because of them, we are still alive as a species today. We only have to understand that there is something that is uh, needs my attention. And how can I pay attention to it and resolve it? Now, fear, what is fear is when you are thinking about some unknown thing. You, you don't know what is going to happen. And that is bothering you because you feel that, am I going to be safe? Am I going to be okay? So how to address fears? Because the only way to address fears is through the fear, not around the fear and avoiding the fear and bypassing the fear and uh, um, what to say, just not thinking about the fear. None of that is going to work. All right. The only way is through. Remember this very, very important statement to remember at any given point of time in your life when you're faced with the challenges. The only way is through. You know, we have heard this uh, advertisement, right? Dar ke aage jeet hai. That is exactly what aage, dar ke aage, uske through ab jaoge to aage jeet milegi. So the only way is through. So how can I get through my fear onto the other side and make friends with my fear and understand what that fear is trying to bring to my attention? All right. So there is a very interesting uh, way that you can do it. I'm, I've just given you a format. You can draw this on your sheet of paper and you can look for this TED talk by Tim Ferriss when he talks about fear setting. Okay, there is a TED talk. I would have loved to have uh, shown it to you all right now on the call, but it will take 20 minutes extra, which I think you all can do on your own. So when you watch the talk, he will give you the same framework that I have put here, that addressing your fears, for example, write down your fear. What he says is define your fear. Write very clearly about something that take any one fear in your life that, okay, tomorrow I have to travel to an unknown place. Let us say I'm traveling to the mountains for the first time and it is winter season. Okay. So my fear is, oh my God, I'm going to travel to the mountains. I have never been to the mountains. It is winter. It is going to be very cold. Will I be okay? Will I be able to bear the cold? What will happen? You know, will I fall ill? I may have all these fears. Okay. So define your fear. Okay. And if you can prevent it from happening what are some actions that you can take for that fear to prevent that fear from becoming real in your life for example okay am i afraid of the cold what are what are all the things that i can carry or prepare myself so that i don't that i can manage the cold 
okay am i worried about the food okay what simple things can i pack for myself which will help me to uh, take care of my image can i pack some uh, dry fruits or can i pack some energy bars or can i take some non perishable foods which will help uh, me uh, during times when you know i don't know if i'll get food on time or whatever fears you have okay you write about what are the actions that you can take to prevent it on the third uh, column you will see let us say that it happens and then or uh, what can you do to repair it in the eventuality you reach there and you are feeling cold now itself what can you do to take measures to uh, 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 repair that situation can you co connect uh, talk to some people can you find some helplines or can you what are the things that you can do to address that fear or take care of that fear when you give your mind all these systems to face the worst possible outcome you know we are always thinking about the worst possible outcome you prepare you think about it instead of avoiding it right you think about it think about all the scenarios that can go wrong and then say okay what action do i need to take to avoid it or in case it happens what are the things that i can do can i keep some phone numbers handy can i keep an extra power bank in case i run out of power whatever it is all right so i'm just saying when you do these things you will see that that the 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 a uh, proportion of that fear or the magnet magnitude of that fear will not be so much you will be prepared in some way or the other and then your brain will slowly accept that situation and be more open to exploring that uh, act activity like that we have to put down all our fears he says put down 10 and then i would say that keep adding to this list every time you have a fear in your head add it here sit and talk to your fear make fear your friend allow your fear to talk to you and express to you it is like let us say that you have a child who's had a bad day at school and the child comes home and the child is upset and then you're looking at the child and saying what happened why you're hanging your face like this always you're doing like this come eat your food go do your homework you you got punished okay you must have been your mistake you're yelling at the child instead can you sit the child down and say okay what happened can you tell me what happened is there something that you know you would like to share the child may not share immediately the child may deny it and child may say no i want to go to my room but give them the space talk to it in the same way can you pamper your fear with that attention can you give your fear that attention and address it and give it yourself some of these inputs so that you can prepare for the unknown your br your brain is your your fear center is afraid of the unknown but by doing this exercise you are building that connection of the hippocampus with your neocortex and your neocortex will also collaborate and try to come up with ways where you could solve that problem that is why it is so important all right so now we come down to the mantras for conscious living so oh we just have 10 minutes or can i take an extra 5 minutes i hope that is okay with everyone yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah Absolutely. so the okay. yes ma'am yeah so some of the mantras that i have stated here is the building basic building block for living a conscious life is building awareness first becoming aware of what is this that is happening in my mind is it a voice of fear or voice of purpose and if it is a voice of fear what are my fears can i put it down how can i address these fears how can i overcome these fears okay it is very very important for us to to, to recognize that these the past that has gone is like a baggage that you're carrying on your back and you're climbing a mountain it is possible for you to lessen the burden by in, uh, indulging in these practices and activities so first build awareness as to where i am what is my orientation what is it that i need to know deeply what is happening with me what is my emotional state every time your brain goes into or your mind goes into a cycle of creating stories about a situation my first and foremost suggestion to everybody is take deep breaths and bring your attention back to your body and become aware of what is happening in your body that is going to help you cut that tendency of the mind to create fearful stories for you and then to recognize how can i soothe myself right now by taking deep breaths so that i can collaborate with my neocortex and find out a solution for the situation so the first most important thing is because it is in the next slide but i'm adding it right here that start breathing breathing is your The, is a is a free gift a tool that the universe has given you you can call it universe you can call god you can call it higher power you can call call it anything you have you have free breath around you free air around you and you still don't breathe if you all check you won't be breathing beyond your throat right now until where are your lungs they are right down here below your rib cage 
how many times do you take deep breaths how many times do you give your lungs the luxury of having fresh breath all throughout the the capillaries so breathing is your first and foremost tool address the interferences we just now spoke about how to address the fears okay identify your core values ask yourself what are certain values that are important to me in my life my values could be yeah i i am a person of integrity i i live up to my uh, commitments i like to fulfill my commitments i am an accountable person i like honesty honesty is not about truth or lies honesty is more about are you honest with yourself more than the world around uh, to the world outside of you all right honesty with oneself so identify your core values and see how much am i adhering to my core values and living my life by these values because it affects your self esteem if your self worthiness is not good is somewhere you have deviated from that and that is troubling you inside so identify these things cultivate a daily discipline put a few things in place i'll talk about daily discipline in the next slide but a daily discipline is important why discipline is given so much importance in the army because it becomes second nature when you are faced with calamity you don't have to look at now what do i do that ingrained discipline will come to your rescue at that moment okay so what is a daily discipline you want to uh, put into your life whatever it is identify that i'll give you some examples later on consistency over quantity now that you have a daily discipline it is so important for you to be regular consistency every single day they say that it takes anywhere between 21 to 66 days for any habit to uh, for any activity to become a habit depending on the complexity of the action show up every day and your brain see what you do your brain will start paying attention to whatever you pay it attention or energy to so consistency instead of meditating for 1 hour every day can i meditate for 5 minutes every single day instead of 1 hour once in a week that is of no use but 5 minutes 10 minutes every day very powerful okay apply kaizen kaizen is a japanese concept of 1% incremental changes to whatever action you are doing either it could be a daily increment or a weekly increment or a fortnightly increment or a monthly increment i don't know it all again depends on the activity how can i get better than who i was in my yesterday this is a very powerful way for personal and self growth for conscious living right and the most important thing is stop complaining stop living the life of a victim start taking charge of your life in your stop pointing the finger outside and ask yourself how can i take responsibility for this situation if a uh, if violence is happening in gaza and it is troubling me here then where in my life am i being violent with myself or with the world around me how can i put an end to that violence how can i become more aware and empathetic to myself and to the world around me that is the biggest contribution you can do to any war that is happening in the world all right practice gratitude this is one of the most powerful practices that a human being can practice that anything that you want to manifest in your life can start with first recognizing what is there already in your life that is a blessing and this is best done just before you go to sleep because like i said your brain is always asking for give me something to do i want to do something and what inputs you give to your brain just before you go to sleep is what your brain is going to be working on throughout the night and that is what it will present to you in the morning so the mood for the next day is set the previous night so what are you watching what are you listening to what are you thinking of before you go to bed the best gift you can give yourself is practice gratitude every single night how you do it keep a little notebook next to your bed keep some even a small notebook like this and write down three things that went well for you during the day just this this activity within a week science research has shown that within a week you will start feeling happier and better about yourself that is the power of practicing gratitude follow the four sublime attitudes the four sublime attitudes are from the teachings of the buddha called the brahma vihara these teachings are uh, in 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 short i'm just going to you all can explore this more on the internet these are four teachings he talks about maitreya karuna mudita and upeksha maitreya is what friendship how can i live my life in friendship with myself and with people around me karuna is compassion how can i be compassionate with myself you know the self critical voice oh i can't do this i can never do that i have always been like this you know i'm 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 always failing at things i'm always goofing up things like this like that self critical thinking can you be compassionate to yourself and then be compassionate to people around you that is the second brahma vihara the third 
sublime attitude is mudita one of the most powerful attitudes how can i rejoice in other people's happiness how can i take away jealousy and envy from my life and bring mudita bhava which is when i see someone having something that i would like to have in my life how can i bring myself to bless them and say i am happy for you and i wish for you to have everything that you want and this is a force people my friends remember that what you give out comes back to you whatever energy you give out there it has to come back to you that is one of the laws of the universe so when you bless people to have happiness the happiness comes manifold to you also and the fourth brahma vihara is upeksha uh, an attitude of equanimity of balance of this too shall pass whatever is there today whether it is extreme happiness that is also going to pass if there is extreme sadness that is also going to pass life is a sine wave how can i keep bringing instead of being on any one end of the seesaw when i'm happy i'm extremely happy when i'm sad i'm utterly sad how can i come more towards the center of the seesaw how can i be more balanced in my attitude towards life this too shall pass this is a very good mantra to remember the five agreements are uh, agreements that i have read from the book the four agreements and the fifth agreement by don miguel ruiz and i would suggest that all of you please read this book he talks about five agreements that we make with ourselves for living a life free from suffering the first agreement is be impeccable with your word only utter words that you would like to hear for yourself because every word you utter is a blessing or a curse unto yourself and then unto the other they say no in hindi shubh shubh bolo speak good words that is why there is so much power in the chanting of mantras in the spoken kind words spoken or you know speaking words of high quality the second agreement is don't take things personally don't take everything that people come and tell you personally if you are taking it personally that means there is a lot of interference the second point there is interference in the way that you are managing your life which you need to get rid of because once you are clear about who you are you are in touch with who you are you are living consciously nobody can come and uh, offend you the third thing is don't make assumptions because when you assume you make an ass of you and me a s s u m e all right so don't assume because you never know what is happening in the other person's life it is very important for us to put ourselves in the shoes of everybody that we judge to even give a thought to what could be happening in their lives as a result of which their behavior is such so don't make assumptions the fourth agreement you make with yourself is always do your best never do half hearted jobs if you do something try to do it. your best i mean there is no best way of doing anything what is the best possible way that you can do don't compromise on your effort and the fifth agreement he says is that be with an open mind always be open to listening but apply what resonates for you you don't have to listen to everything that everybody says from the past one hour even if you liked one point that i shared today just apply that one point you don't have to worry about applying everything and remembering everything no whatever felt good for you that ah this feels something that i can practice this feels like something that will work for me apply that point and these are five agreements that if you learn keep in your mind and learn to make with uh, yourself you will see that the suffering that you create for yourself in your life will start lessening and you'll start feeling more better about yourself okay the most important mantra according to me is honor your body this body has been given to us by the divine it is a gift from our parents to us the best way that we can be grateful to this life is by taking care of this body because this is the vehicle and the instrument through which you are having each and every experience and let me tell you that your challenges are your biggest allies they are here to help you grow welcome challenges in your life look at them as friends in disguise all right and see how you can treat your body in the best possible way so that you can manage these challenges and quickly let me go to giving you all some tools your toolkit to become to apply these mantras in your life to live a more conscious life journaling is an activity which is non negotiable writing down your thoughts on paper with pen is the most powerful way for you to get all the garbage from your head out when you keep it inside 
you are thinking right no no i know what is wrong in my life ha huh? i know i need to do something no write it and write down all the stories that are attached to it you will see the more and more you journal the more and more light you feel and you feel expansive and you will see that your intuition gets better you start getting better ideas into your head you will start connecting with the right person at the right time so many magical things start happening in your life all right journaling the second thing is mindfulness in everyday activities mindfulness is doing every activity with full focus if i am eating food can i just eat food and not look at my phone or not look at the tv or not talk to anybody can i honor my food can i look at every activity in my life as an offering to god if god were in front of you would you be chatting with somebody else or would all your attention be with that divine power for those of you who believe in the presence of god all right so in the same way can you look at every eating your food taking a bath even cooking a meal can you do these activities with utmost attention and with reverence i would say that bringing reverence into uh, 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 as a quality into every action that we do would be a wonderful thing for us to practice all right meditation meditation is the ability to sit in one place and to be fully present to what is happening in your mind meditation is not controlling your thoughts people it is not controlling your thoughts it is to be sitting in a non judgmental way and to be observing what is happening in the present moment but what we do do is we hold on to the breath as an anchor right the breath is something that helps you to anchor yourself to this present moment and as you're watching your in breath and out breath you will have thoughts that come and then you notice those thoughts and then you come back to the breath so the thoughts will pass by like clouds in the sky you keep coming back to the breath the more and more you practice meditation the more and more you are strengthening your prefrontal cortex that is going to help you build focus build um, a lot of um, problem solving cap capabilities your health will improve your digestion will improve you will be able to reverse so many illnesses that are going in your body because you are not creating too much of stress in your body right and meditation need not be we say the thumb rule is as many minutes as your age but you can start off with a 5 minute meditation goal and then build it over a period of few months and maybe a couple of years right but start with 5 minutes of watching your breath every day and there are so many apps that can teach you to practice meditation all right creative visualization thinking about the things that you want in your life rather than thinking about what you don't want we already spoke about this so make a list of all the things that you would like to manifest in your life you are allowed to have things in your life you are living this human life to enjoy these things and yes once you get these things you will recognize that no this is not giving me the happiness that i thought it would give me but never mind first get it and then you make the decision don't allow others to tell you not to desire anything you desire your object get it and you make the decision that this is not me giving me happiness and go on your quest and finally you will recognize that going within is what is giving you the utmost happiness but you discover that for yourself all right so use creative visualization to manifest everything that you want fulfill your desires your needs in this human life all right breath work i already spoke to you about the importance of breath work any kind of breathing practice is very very important it helps for you to soothe your body our 72000 nadis our chakra system our meridians all of them carry a lot of blocked emotions when you do breath work you are bringing everything our energy body in balance with the physical body we have the five koshas i am not going into that right now but if you look up the pancha koshas on the internet you will see that we have these five sheets of existence and the second sheet is the pranamaya kosha which has got to do with the breath so breathing is so important adequate sleep nobody needs to tell you about the importance the day you you don't have good sleep you see how groggy you are you can't think you can't um uh, do anything properly conscious consumption consumption is not only the food that you eat be aware of what you're putting in your mouth be aware of what news you're watching be aware of the company that you keep be aware of your surroundings be aware of your emotional state journal about it okay they say satsang right satsang is not doing bhajan and kirtan only satsang is who are the people that i'm surrounded by all right exercise the body we already said honor your body so exercise any form of exercise if nothing just walk every day for 20 minutes 
I I I don't believe we need hours of activity. Even a few minutes of activity every day is going to take you a long way in taking care of the body. And there is nothing to substitute spending time in nature. Spend time in nature. If you if you are living in a city, have a little garden, a small garden. Have a few plants. Sit and tend to those plants. Look at the greenery, or look in the distance. Look at the greenery, and allow those things to soothe you, to bring a sense of calm and a sense of connection with the universe, a sense of connection with everybody through connecting with nature. It is so healing. Nature is extremely healing. All right. So, my friends, this is what I wanted to um, share with you all today. and now i am happy to take questions from you all and i hope you all found something of value in whatever i shared with you all today yes i am ready to uh, receive all the questions wow ma'am what a wonderful knowledge given by you i hope our audience learned many new things from this session i would like to highlight some of the points like cultivating mindfulness as a guiding force in decision making make authenticity a priority allow it to guide your choices cherish mindful connection and release the burdens of excess curate life consciously severing the elegance found in simplicity uncover profound meaning in life's simplest aspect extract beauty from life's chaos by infusing simplicity into every moment it was very effective for our audience again thank you for joining us and sharing your experience your precious time and knowledge with us uh, ma'am there are few more questions which our audience wants to be answered so with your permission shall we start yeah yeah please so ma'am the first yes i am lalita i would like to e- express my appreciation to ms padmaja for the brilliant talk she just gave us whatever she said makes a lot of sense maybe simple everyday things but which you know when we hear her talk makes us think deeply about it and which will impact our lives so beautifully thank you thank you very much for this beautiful talk thank you lalita thank you so much thank you yeah ma'am so the question was how can you simply aspect of your simplify aspect of your life to enhance clarity and purpose all right so if i understood the question right uh, the our uh, one of our listeners wants to know that what can they simplify in their life so that they can have more clarity and purpose so the biggest factor for us to address is the interference waves that is coming from the baggage that we carry i just talk, spoke about our fears about our failures you know i talk about three r's resentments rejections and regrets i would this is an exercise that i ask most of my clients to practice because these three r's the resentments the rejections and the regrets they are like iron balls that are chained to your ankles and they are stopping you from progressing in life you know imagine a uh, 100 ton balls being chained to your ankles can you walk ahead you won't be able to walk ahead right so these resentments rejections and regrets are something that need to be addressed they have to be written like i said journaling make journaling an integral part of your life every day spend some time in self inquiry the most powerful question that you could ask yourself is who am i and by asking yourself that question it is not i am padmaja i live in so and so place i am so and so years old i have done this this is my degree or that is that is not who i am who am i who truly am i what is the kind of experience i am having in my life are the decisions that i am taking coming from a place of fear or are they coming from clarity so for us to have that clarity and purpose is exactly what i spoke about uh, through the course of my session is start journaling start writing down all the three r's resentments rejections and regrets you can note it down and they will all bring out your fears because these three r's carry your fears for the future because you went through these three kinds of experiences they come in the way of you having a an uninhibited future for you to be able to explore life and to do all the things that you've always wanted to do but these fears keep pulling you down right so for you to have clarity for you to be able to access uh, or, and make the right choice it is important for you to build awareness and the foundation stone is awareness and for that awareness journaling and meditation and mindfulness these are two non negotiable practices that everyone has to practice thank you ma'am for answering this question we have one more question yeah. how to overcome overthinking 
overthinking so what is overthinking it is like you know you have a bucket of water you have opened the tap and you are not closing the tap that water is falling and it is overflowing and overflowing and overflowing right and when it is overflowing it is going to flood the bathroom then if your drainage is not good it will flood your house and then your whole house is going to be flooded overthinking is you've been holding on to these fears and thoughts for eons and eons see i let me tell you who you are today is not just who you are in this lifetime you have genes in you of your ancestors your parents your grandparents and everybody else you not only get your nose and your height and your complexion and all those uh, factors you also get their fears and phobias and you know their belief systems through you so most of the fears and phobias that we have are sometimes not even ours they are part and parcel of the belief system that we get from our causal body in our genetic code so it is important for us to um address all of these things to journal about these things to get these things out write about it every day so there is a beautiful practice which i uh, learned from a very famous teacher um i'm forgetting his name right now but he taught this beautiful practice called vasana daha kriya all right what is vasana vasana is emotions daha is burning and kriya is the action what he said was every day you sit and write let you take one experience of your life which you are thinking about all the time okay and keep writing about it and writing about it and writing about it all your fears the worst fears just keep writing and writing and finish it and then burn it because what physics tells is you cannot destroy energy you can only transform energy so you're transforming that thought the fearful energy in you to heat energy all right and then next day you may still have residues of that fear again keep writing keep writing that thing until you come to a point when when you write it has no hold over you this is so powerful it's a tried and tested practice so i have used it in my life and so many of my clients have also i've uh, recommended it to them and they have come back and told me padmaja it used to feel so funny i used to go and do this practice on the terrace every day because i'm burning so much paper there is so much of soot flying around and people are wondering what am i doing but i'm so, i'm totally free of those th- thoughts that i used to overthink about all the time so vasan dah kriya is a very very powerful practice that you all could try and see and i'm sure that uh, you all can you all can write to me feedback on my instagram handle you know as to how this uh, worked for you i would love to get feedback for these practices I hope uh, this uh, sounds like an interesting exercise for whoever asked the question. Yes. Madam, uh, I, I used to uh, divert my mind towards mm-hmm. my daily activities when I uh, start th- overthinking. Yes, sir. Say, say uh, walking. I, I go for the walking and uh, talk with the people. So I, I divert my mind if I am overthinking. So, sir, that This- is. Uh, a a natural tendency for people to divert their mind the idea here is to address the issue and not divert the mind because diverting the mind is like you know you are saying okay i'll i'll close this file or i'll show it under the carpet and i'll look at it some other time but it will not go it is like stuffing it deep inside again okay. so it is important for us to address the issue because the moment you address it it will shrink and it will disappear it is just asking for your attention for your addressal and then it go away from your life okay thank you thank you madam yes yes thank you sir thank you for sharing yes thank you ma'am for answering this question we have one more question yeah what will you advise to someone who is struggling struggling with fear in their daily life so i just spoke about the fear setting exercise that has been very powerful for me fear the only way is through and let me give you an interesting visualization those of you who are uh, looking to work with your fear right i uh, i am a very visual person in my head i've always had visuals and you know i play around with a lot of visuals in my head so what i used to do is when there is an activity in front of me which is very fearful i would imagine you know when you think about your fear the fear seems like a big thing and you feel very small in front of it right oh my god how am i going to address this fear i then decided that i am going to become hanuman so hanuman had this capability of growing big in size and shrinking in size right so i i used to visualize that i am growing big 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 like hanuman and that fear is now shrinking in front of me and now that fear is saying please allow me to pass through you for my own salvation this is what i used to tell myself 
what if you were more powerful than your own fear and what if you could give an image to yourself that i have in me everything that needs to handle this that is needed to handle this fear so let me tell you all another one thing that in our lives whatever comes to us any situation any challenge that comes to us is coming because there is a connection with us there is a resonance with us and that can be solved only by us it is like the challenge is a lock and you are the key and that is why addressing the fears is actually not only you overcoming the challenge and feeling good about it and improving your self esteem tell me how many of you after having overcome a challenge have felt so good about yourself would that opportunity have come you can put a thumbs up or you could put down in the uh, chat that yes you have gone through such a situation because without challenges where is the opportunity for you to feel good about yourself that you achieved something you did something you overcame something so we should look at challenges as the devices of the universe for you to help grow in your own self esteem and when you grow in self esteem is when you can achieve all the things that you want to do you know what the definition of performance is by one of a one of the writers Tim timothy galloway in one of his books called the inner inner game he talks about uh, performance is equal to potential minus interference we all have the potential we all have everything that is needed for us to address that challenge the interference is the fear okay so imagine that i have it all i am bigger than the fear and the only way is through let me dive through this fear and then let me overcome it that is the best way and for us to dive through that fear is the framework that i gave you all fear setting thing tim uh, ferris go and look at tim ferris fear setting youtube video look for if you just type tim ferris fear setting you will find the first uh outcome will be that video just watch that it's a beautiful video very powerful i was blown away when i saw that for the first time and it actually was the most powerful tool that i used to overcome my fears so i would suggest that you can follow this all right i hope that answers your question whoever asked that question yes ma'am thank you ma'am for answering these questions that was a very good piece of advice again thank you all for attending today's webinar and if you have any additional questions you can contact us by email or telephone we are happy to provide additional support to you please follow us on our social media and subscribe to our youtube channel for new learning